Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been about a week since we got a video out, but we've been busy, so if you hang on to after the break, I'll tell you what we've been up to. Alright guys, it's been a pretty fun week here on the homestead. We had the kids come up over the 4th of July. Two of our four children came up, our adult children, and they brought with them three of our grandchildren. So we had a great time with them. We uh, went and uh, put off some fireworks, blew up about $600 worth of boom, boom, boom. But uh, they had a great time doing it and uh, and uh, we, we all enjoyed it. We went over to the folks house and uh, set them off over there. So. We had a uh, oh one two three four generations enjoying themselves together, so that was well worth it. We're sorry if we've taken the time away, but guys, we we just need, we needed a break. We needed that time to see our kids and uh, see our grandkids. There's a couple of them that we hadn't met before, so um, times are funny, and the kids have moved out or live all over the country. It's hard for them to get home as often as they'd like to, or as often as we'd like to see them. But uh, we are really, really thankful that they took the time to come up and visit with us. And uh, um, our daughter, she came down from Ohio. Our son came up from Florida, and uh, just a just a good time. We had a we had a we had a great time. We ate some good food, shared some good company, and uh, just all around got to all of us uh, put our feet back here on the homestead and uh, remember where home is. And uh, no matter how far you drift, you're always welcome here. So, uh, guys, there. Uh, means a lot to us our, our family the whole homestead idea is built around the idea of family and uh, it's a it's a multi-generational thing we hope one day to leave the homestead to one of the kids and uh, hopefully they'll pass it on to one of the grandkids and uh, this little adventure will just keep right on going but the kids we saw are the same kids these gardens fed when they were young so we really enjoyed having them here but guys, I've got some great footage. I'm sitting here sweating. I'm actually, I'm just talking because I'm enjoying the shade on the porch here for a minute. But uh, we got some great footage out here in the sunshine. So I'm going to take you out. We're going to run around, take a look at a few things. We're going to be kind of manic because we weren't sure if we were making a video today. So we're going to get, going to jump around just a little bit. But uh, we'll get you around, see a few things, and then I'll be back to talk to you. So hang on, let's look at that footage. Everybody, your great big one. Dunn's huge. That's a big flat Dutch cabbage. Yeah. Looks great. Got another one over here. On top of that basket looks pretty good. We're, uh, let's say, halfway down the row so far. We got full basket, working on another full basket. You say that one's just as big? When we get done cutting these cabbages out. You can see these old. Uh, spent broccoli plants down through here. We're gonna go ahead and just chop and drop those right in with the tiller. So I'll show you that too. But let's tune back in here and see what Tina comes up with next. That looks like a pretty good head there. Look good. Won't take too many of those to fill a basket. We'll be making crowd all night tonight. All right, guys. We started over there on the other side of the garden, and we got the cabbage picked off. Now we've got the cabbage and the old broccoli chopped and dropped. We used the tiller and ground it back in. 
Um, let's see, there's the peppers there. They're still putting on, so we're leaving them. Beyond the peppers there were some squash that had played themselves out, so we went ahead and ground them in. We took the overgrown squash and fed those to the chickens. Then I went ahead and retilled here where we tilled in the sea of beans. We pretty much got this garden ready for uh, fall planting. We haven't yet decided quite what we're going to do. But now we're getting over here into the potato buckets. And uh, Tina's pulling off some little potatoes. Let's see, we're not, not through half of them yet, but about a third of them. We got a little bucket of potatoes going on. Happy to have those. The search is on. We'll try to film a bucket here. We'll film one right through uh, Tina getting a bucket done. Pretty heavy, I should be hoping. <laughs> All right, you'll notice when you dump your buckets that they're full of roots, but the potatoes are not very deep in the bucket, so you can take the whole bottom section off. It's usually not any in the bottom. You're looking down about, oh, six or eight inches right around the area where you planted your uh, your main seed potato. There's some bigger ones in there. Yeah. But we'll see what we get out of a bucket anyway. Give you guys an idea what comes out of a five-gallon bucket. And I think we put what, two seed potatoes in each one? I believe it was. So, not too bad, got down to a bunch of roots and we got a, we're gonna fill that other eight foot planter with this dirt, so we're just doing this right here in the tractor bucket. Had an interesting experience. We uh, climbed on the tractor earlier to find out this whole arm here was full of wasps. So we emptied a can of wasp spray into it and then uh, went over it with the hose a little bit and it got them out of there. They've, uh, decided to live elsewhere but that was quite an adventure to be up on the tractor and have to come down in a hurry but it about gave poor Tina a heart attack having to watch all that but uh, she didn't know what to do she always wants to help but you can't run into a nest of wasps so she ran and got some wasp killer and got the hose going for me and uh, we got it taken care of I got hit a few times but nothing too traumatic but Looks like good potatoes going on. We're gonna go ahead and work our way through the rest of these buckets. We'll get this dirt over there and put in the other planter and we'll come back and show you some other things we got going on. Alright guys, we were going to go ahead and finish up, but uh, the red potatoes turned out pretty nice, so we wanted to bring you back in. We'll show you what those look like. They're, uh, they seem to have done a little bit better with some Kennebex and some russet golds, but got some nice red potatoes in here. Seem to have come out pretty good. I'll show you the size on those, look pretty good. But, either way, we got a little uh, little tote full of potatoes. Those will be fun. We like to just have them. They're a seasonal snack. We don't know. We don't put too much emphasis on them, but uh, they're a nice seasonal snack. We like to have around. So we're looking forward to some beef stew and some little tiny baked potatoes. But uh, that's why we grow them in the bucket, just for fun. So we'd bring you guys along. Let you let you take a look at some of these as they come out you're interested in growing potatoes in a bucket there you go not bad like I said in between runs we're uh, running this dirt over to the big eight foot planter so, nice big red one there but alrighty guys we'll cut out and find something else to look at alright guys Tina's been in here playing in my dirt it's a uh, it's some really healthy dirt guys we get it a uh, We've got it pretty much ready to grow about anything. We've amended it so many times over the years that we're just real, real happy with it. And it makes great dirty feet. But Tina has climbed back here in the South American corn so that we can show you just how tall it is. Now, Tina is four foot 10 
and she is way below the tops of that plant. So <laughs> she's found her a tall one in there to play with, but uh, that one's probably four times her height. But it's all doing really well. It's starting to go to tassel. We've seen some small immature ears starting to come on. So we're happy about that. But uh, we're going to see how it turns out. But so far, we're real happy with it. And it's probably going to end up getting added back to our hybrid corn thing. And if, if you want to see the joys of working and playing on a homestead, here, T, look at me real quick. Let's y'all to look at T's shirt. If you don't end up. If you don't end up the day looking like this, you ain't homesteading. So, <laughs> you're not living. You're not living. Right. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll find something else to look at. All right, we're back here at the watermelons. Tina will show me. We've got a got a few little watermelons going on back here. A nice little hand-sized one there, and another one down in there. She tells me there's some more going on out here in the middle. <laughs> I don't think there's anything that hides better than a watermelon. I know when I brought... There's one. You found one right there? Yeah. Yep, that's a small one. And I know there's one. Yeah, and there's one over here along this edge before we get up here into the peanuts. Guys, there's the peanuts there. Haven't showed those in a little bit, but they are still going really strong. They're even uh, crowding out most of the weeds in their little bed, so we're pretty sure that ought to be a pretty good harvest through there. You know, move those runners over. We left these last few cabbage. There weren't enough room to get the tractor back in here, but we chopped and dropped everything up on up through there. And uh, we'll take you and look at some of the other gardens. All right, guys, you're gonna get the quick view of the raised bed garden here. Guys, I'm just uh, about out of breath here. Uh, we're just gonna catch a few things on video. Hoping you enjoy. We got a uh, nice big dill heads going on over there. I don't think those were up last time they've come up through. That broccoli is going to end up getting pulled. It's starting to bolt. Peppers are putting on really, really good. Got plenty of peppers down in there. I don't know if you can see them, but they're in there. There's the snacker bed onions. They are doing phenomenally. Take you down here. I'm going to show you the sweet corn. The corn is doing great. The squash are about spent, but we're still getting a little payout out of them. And I want you to see the difference between the sweet corn and our hybrid project corn. There's probably a good solid three feet, if not more. But there's a solid three feet of difference on the project corn versus the sweet corn. And uh, that's the kind of growth we were hoping for. So uh, there's your sweet corn there. That's six, seven foot tall. But We'll go on and see what else we can find to look at. All right, guys, back here on the back side of the sweet corn. And uh, as promised, the gores have taken over that entire gap between the corn and the fence. And uh, they are probably oh, at least knee deep down through there. But it's going to be quite an adventure now that they're uh, now that they've taken it to the point where we can't walk through there. It's going to be more of a We'll go in and find what we can find later. So, <laughs> hide and seek game, <laughs> but uh, search and destroy. Uh, there you go. There's another great shot down the top of the sweet corn to the project corn. You can see how much uh, taller that is, and that's with no fertilizer at all. So, the sweet corn was fertilized three times. So we're real happy about the project corn. We're going to keep going with that from year to year. We're going to add that South American to it. We'll probably get some more height, some more ear size. Uh, we'll see how that goes at the end of the season, and we'll walk you through that when that comes. All right, guys, we're over here by the chicken tractor. Here's a project Tina's been working on. You can see the weeds and stuff thrown out here on the yard. This was a this was a strawberry bed, and it got overgrown. So we've got some new strawberry starts. You guys saw those in the paper cups. Here, uh, let's spin around, look past Tina. They're over there in those boxes there, but. She's got these boxes all cleaned out. We're going to top those off with some good soil. And I think we're going to put fresh strawberry starts in there. But that's one of the things we've been up to. All right, guys. One more thing I wanted to show you. We'll take a quick walk down here through the tomatoes. I'm going to show you they're all doing well. They're all about two foot, two and a half foot. 
but uh, they're still young. We got our tomatoes in late. We always start them late. But uh, we want them to be out here in the heat and the dry. They like the heat, and then we mulch them in. You can see in between them there. That way we can keep them consistently wet. But uh, when if you can get a combination of good deep heat, good air circulation, and moist ground, your tomatoes will do good for you. You can see they're putting on pretty good. They're uh, got some flowers on them here. Flowers on them about everywhere. But uh, I'd say the tomatoes, they will eventually get to the tops of the poles. But right now they're oh, close to halfway. We'll see where they get here in a week, next week or so. All right, guys, we're going to make one last stop here. We're going over here at the Sweet Potatoes. I want to tell you, they are a good, it'll say 16 inches above the planter now. They are flowing out onto the ground all the way around. And the leaves here, we'll get in close here. Leaves are looking real good. We're showing a lot of good, healthy growth. Not a whole lot of bug damage. Look around through there, they're pretty healthy. But, uh, We've been uh, hitting them up with a little bone meal here and there, and uh, that keeps uh, that keeps helping form the potatoes down below about once a week or so. But uh, just wanted to bring you over and show you those. And then we won't get into too much of this, but uh, we're getting this other one filled up here. We got some uh, chicken bedding, and uh, there you see some of the dirt out of the potato buckets. But guys, we're just gonna scrap fill this one till we get to. It'll say halfway or so, and then we'll improve the quality of the soil a little bit. But for right now, we just need to get some bulk in here. We're going to use organic materials and uh, just fill her on up. And uh, by organic, I just mean they were grown in Mother Nature, not uh, organic as in pesticide free or can't guarantee any of that. But uh, we try to keep it pretty safe around here. But that's the dirt out of the potatoes and some, some uh, chicken bedding. And uh, we'll just keep adding to it till we get about halfway. Then we'll top dress it. We'll get it planted probably with uh, pumpkins for later this fall. And we'll see how that goes. So we'll get back up here on the porch and talk to you a little bit. But hope you enjoyed the walk around. All right, guys. That's about going to wrap it up. We really appreciate you guys hanging around, watching the video all the way through. If you made it here to the end, then we really appreciate you. So if you would, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or comments, we hope you'll leave those down below or just leave us a comment and say hello or tell us how your garden's doing or what you're planning for your fall gardens. But uh, we're going to have some videos coming up this next week and uh, we're going to be discussing how we're going to be doing our fall gardens and uh, how we're going to time our planting to do that. So um, right now in midsummer, the idea is just get things picked, get, get what we've got already grown processed, and then we'll be setting up nice, you know, to get ready and do some fall planting. So it all works out pretty good here in uh, East Tennessee. We've got pretty easy transitions between the seasons. So got plenty of summer left. This is when things kind of slow down. It'd be easier for us to make some videos and uh, cover a few things. But guys, we really appreciate you coming by the channel. If you like the content here on the channel, we hope you'll subscribe. Down next to the subscribe button is a bell. If you'll ring that bell, that'll send you a notification whenever we release a new video. That's a great way to keep up with the channel. But guys, we appreciate you guys coming by here. We'll catch you in the next one.